Now, what, what, what's the issue with uh, central bank digital currencies? Today, uh, our current uh, payment system is as follows. Uh, if you are a commercial bank, you have access to the balance sheet of a central bank. So you have an account, and it's a digital account, and you can use this balance sheet of the central bank to do transaction with the central bank and do transaction with all the other banks in the system. So the entire system of uh, interbank transaction goes through a centralized ledger in the central bank. And therefore, everything that's interbank occurs through those kind of things. And the Fed funds rate in the US is the interest rate at which these things get done. Uh, the reality, however, is that uh, apart from commercial banks that have access to the balance sheet of a central bank, everybody else in the economy, individuals, households, corporations, but also non-bank financial institutions, do not have access to the balance sheet of the central bank. And therefore, whenever they have to do payment transaction, how to do the payment transaction? They do them using uh, uh, private banks. And private banks essentially effectively create money uh, when they make a loan to you, they create a deposit for you, or you can put money in the banking system, and they're using the private banking system, essentially, to do transactions. And of course, uh, there are some transaction costs involved in it, and so on, so people use uh, the bank account, they use wiring system, they use uh, checks, or if you're using PayPal, Venmo, Square, and other system of this sort, uh, effectively, you are in the background having your own bank account that is linked then to this digital payment system. Now, it's not a very efficient system and implies some costly transaction cost, even if those transaction costs have fallen over time. Now, suppose you create a central bank a digital currency. Effectively, what does it mean? Is it a cryptocurrency? No. Is it based on, based on blockchain? No. Is it based on DLT and is distributed? No. It's like the current system. It's a centralized ledger where all transactions occur. It's totally monitored by the central bank. It's private. It's not uh, permissionless and so on. It's restricted. But then suppose that every individual had also an account with the central bank. And therefore, you had access to the balance sheet of the central bank the same way Citibank or uh, JP Morgan or any other commercial bank does then you would not need to have a bank account. You would not need to uh, use checks or use uh, wire transfers or any deposit system because you can use the balance sheet of the bank. So if I have to give you money, I can do it by transferring through the balance sheet of a central bank some money from my balance sheet uh, to your balance sheet, or to my account, to the other one, the same way the banks do in the interbank banking system. So when central banks are thinking about the central bank digital currency, they're thinking about a centralized system with a single ledger that expands that the balance sheet is available to every bank today, to every individual in the economy. And of course, if and when that were to occur, it will be a completely efficient system, it will be almost virtually costless, it will be safe, it's guaranteed by the central bank, it will reduce a lot of the transaction cost. But think about the implication of uh, a central bank creating a central bank digital currency. It will dominate, first of all, any cryptocurrencies. There's no reason why anybody should do any payment with a cryptocurrency. It would also dominate the current digital payment systems, the various Venmo's, PayPal's, and so on of the world, because why should you use those ones and pay even a small fee when you can do it for free with a central bank? And of course, it will also dominate the deposits that the individuals have in the private commercial banks, because why to have a deposit when you can do payments essentially using your free bank account with the central bank. So if and when, uh, let, let me finish and then we can have any question and so on and have a discussion. So if and when any central bank in the world is gonna decide to have a central bank digital currency in this centralized way, it's gonna dominate every cryptocurrencies, it's gonna dominate the current system of deposits in private banks, and it's going to also dominate the current various models, and there are different ones around the world, of a digital payment system. In my view, it will be actually a revolution that makes actually uh, any type of payment system much more efficient, zero cost, uh, secure, and so on and so on. Now, some people argue, uh, well, uh, people will still want to use, unquote, uh, cryptocurrencies because uh, with cryptocurrencies you have anonymity, 
while if you have a central bank digital currency, uh, Big Brother Central Bank is going to monitor everything you do. I think that that argument uh, is uh, incorrect uh, in a number of dimensions. First dimension, which is incorrect, as you know, you know, Bitcoin is not really uh, private. If law enforcement actually authority want to go after you, they prefer actually, if you do your illegal transaction with Bitcoin, they're much more easy to track and catch you than with private banks. And there are some alternative cryptocurrencies that are supposed to be fully, unquote, private, but I speak with central banks and there is no central bank in the world is going to ever allow a Monero of the world and so on to having uh, totally private transactions where any criminal, any terrorist, any tax evader can essentially have purely private transaction. That's never going to happen. Uh, they're going to find plenty of ways, and I'm not going to discuss them, in which that action cannot occur. Uh, second observation, this uh, central bank digital currency doesn't have to be uh, public in the sense of the central bank having access to every transaction you have. Today, if you get audited by a tax authority, they have the right uh, through a law enforcement agency to go and say, show me your bank accounts and under good cause in a democracy, uh, you have to show all your bank accounts. So even your bank accounts are not private. So if and when there is a central bank digital currency, uh, the standard is, unquote, privacy and anonymity. But if uh, the government thinks that I'm evading my taxes, they can go uh, to a law enforcement authority and say, sorry, you have to show which transaction you were doing with the central bank uh, by being payment system because we have to monitor whether you declared your income assets and so on. So this idea that you'll have Big Brother that is watching you and is going to monitor everything you do and therefore nobody's going to want to use this system is false. Even today, you don't have privacy. If a true law enforcement authority wants to look at your private financial bank account, the same thing is going to happen with a central bank uh, digital currency. So you can have the default being privacy, and then when needed, and according to law, uh, your account being monitored and audited as needed by the enforcement. So I don't think that that's going to be a problem, and anybody is going to uh, worry about it. However, if you think about the consequences of uh, on the financial system of having a central bank digital currency, then it completely changes the nature of the banking system. Because today, the banking system is based on a fractional reserve banking system where uh, the banks have only a small amount of their assets that are essentially uh, cash or cash-like instruments, reserves, or excess reserves. And whenever they make a loan, they create effectively money and deposit. And therefore, you have essentially uh, only, only a fraction of the liability of the banking system, say, deposits are backed by liquid assets. And that's how you make a refractional banking system uh, multiplication of loans. Now, suppose you have a central bank digital currency. What's going to happen? Uh, that's going to dominate any deposits in the banking system because anybody with a deposit in the banking system is going to essentially move their money to their own account with the central bank. And then the question becomes how, how banks are going to be financing their lending. Effectively, uh, the solution, or at least one of them, is the following one. Instead of having a fractional reserve banking system, you create, uh, like it has been proposed in the past, uh, a narrow banking system where payment systems are fully backed, uh, like they would be in a narrow banking system. But instead of having many private narrow banks, there is only one is the central bank that provides the payment system. And then if uh, private banks want to lend you money for business activity, for mortgages, they have to borrow long-term with long-term borrowing from savers to make long-term, essentially, lending and investments. And that actually resolves many problems because today, with a fractional reserve banking system, you have a maturity transformation. Most of the deposits are short-term. Most of the assets of the banks are long-term. And if there's a bank run, then there's a risk of a run on the banking system. Because of that, you need the deposit insurance. Because of that, you need a lender of last resort. But that creates moral hazard. And once you have moral hazard, then you have to have supervision and regulation of the banking system. You create lots of things. Uh, if you have a narrow bank, you resolve the issue of the payment system. And if you have instead financial institution that borrow long-term and make long-term lending, there is no maturity mismatch and the risk of bank runs and other problems have to do with 
moral hazard is significantly reduced. Now, that's, however, it's a revolution because it means essentially uh, traditional banks uh, disappear because nobody's going to have a deposit with the banking system. Now, an alternative solution uh, to that problem is to say um, we're going to avoid this, in this intermediation of the private bank. So all the money that goes into the central bank uh, account from the private deposit is going to be lent back by the central bank to the private banks. And therefore, these private banks can use these central bank deposits to make lending decisions like today. So you don't get the disintermediation. But of course, uh, you get a situation in which the only depositor in the banking, private banks, is one, the central bank, as opposed to a million of private depositors. And then people worry about uh, the potential for government interfering into your lending decision. Right? You know, Big Brother is going to tell you who to lend to you, uh, and so on and so on. So that, that might be a problem if you don't want to go to narrow banking. The third solution is the one that has been uh, suggested by Christine Lagarde at the AMF. It says we can have the current system with some private and pa uh, public partnership. Uh, your deposits are still with the private banks, but the whole settlement occurs through this uh, digital system that is intermediated by the central bank. So effectively, you have access to the central bank balance sheet as an individual uh, through essentially your private bank but uh, you, uh, you avoid all the inefficiency cost of uh, transaction costs that exist today. You still have a fractional reserve banking system then, and the problems of potential bank runs or moral hazard, and you name it, remain. But that might be a solution that uh, it doesn't go to the extreme of having narrow banking on one side or Big Brother lending everything to the private sector on the other side. So the gist of it, in my view, is that, one, we're going to have a revolution in financial services is fintech, and as I pointed out, has nothing to do with crypto or blockchain. Two, that eventually cash is going to disappear. And actually, that implies interesting things also for monetary policy, like the ability of central banks to go even more negative with policy rates when it's needed, like in a severe economic uh, recession. Three, that these central bank digital currencies are not going to have anything to do. And if any, you speak to any central bank, none of them is going to do it by a distributed ledger. It doesn't make any sense. None of them is going to do it. So it's going to be a centralized system like the current one that they deal with the banks. And four, that more importantly, it has massive implication for the structure of our current uh, fractional reserve banking system. And uh, it might radically change the nature of that towards narrow banking and loanable fund financial institutions. And if you don't want to do that, then you have to think about creative alternatives. So that's the debate that is occurring among central bank, and it's an important one, but uh, has nothing to do with crypto and has nothing to do uh, with blockchain. So, so that's my take on what's the future of uh, digital cash, what's the future of financial intermediation, and what's the future of uh, banking system.